Hello guys and welcome back to my host um, part 4 of the previous series that we're doing um, Yeah, so just before we, we broke up on part 4 we uh, we had literally just gone past establishing um, what the models table what the models dot um, py um, file will look like so we created the files, we created the class the movie class and the book class and now we're gonna um, actually gain a connection with the database in either this part four video or the next part four video i've had to keep the videos quite short just so that um it's not too long and we can fit you know uh, as much concentrated information into one into one kind of video as much as possible so we're gonna get straight into it um yeah share my screen so um the, the, the previous thing we got to um on part three which i will link the video link below um we created um our models because once again I've still got to do from <laughs> the previous part I'm recording this in the same day um, so yeah we, we created this our class where we'll create all the columns that we require uh, for our, both our tables and then we went ahead in, in our models in our create.py um, we created this also um, so now we're gonna go into our terminal and this is quite important we're going to establish a connection with the database. Um, previously, I established that we were going to do it through using Docker, um, the Docker volumes. Um, I will link um, the video below um, of the tutorial on how you, are, you can actually create the Docker file, like a bit of an understanding of Docker, the previous video I made. But um, in here, we're gonna, I'm going to show you how you do it. So <clears throat> the first thing we really want to do um, is we want to create a network. We need a network in order that it can communicate with our application and also with our Docker or MySQL. We're going to be running MySQL in our Docker and then we need to create a volume and then finally we will need to um, run the entire thing together. So the first thing we need to do in here, uh, if you haven't downloaded Docker, click the link um, in my in my descriptions and there'll be a video on how to set up your Docker. The first thing we do is Docker, um, Docker network create um, and then we can name the network we're going to call it um, we're going to call it a social network just to make things um, quite interesting for us so, so docker make sure the spelling is correct yes oh, yeah that's correct so create that and we can we can confirm indeed that our docker network has been created by doing not docker network ls and we can see that it's all the way at the bottom bit there we're going to then create our volume so right now we haven't got any um volumes at the moment if you do docker volume and let's will show you what volumes you've got just a quick yeah so just a quick um background on the volumes so a docker volume it's essentially um a part so it's essentially a place where you can actually store your database so even if you deleted your container or your image that volume would still remain within your computer. So if you were able to, for example, spin up a new Docker container that con that was running my SQL in there, and you had a volume which had my SQL data um, information in there, you can do what's known as mounting. So you can mount that volume onto your onto your new container. You can either do it within the terminal, or you can also run it within a Docker file or within a Docker Compose um, dot YAML file, which we'll go through all of these in later videos. Just give you a more grand understanding of the whole topic but for now um, we're going to create the docker volume and after creating it we're then going to run a whole docker container and um call in all those volumes so um we'll do and here we'll do docker volume create and then we'll call it the name that we want we'll call it um social volume we'll call it, call it social volume we check again now we've got we've created that there and then we'll our database name we're going to call it social um db so now we're going to run the entire application um essentially create the docker container which will contain which will essentially have our mysql um it's going to be a very long command so i guess um if you would like you can pause this video or skip to the bit where i've completed it but what it looks like is docker um Docker run dash d to say that it should run without um, hanging within the terminal so that we can still use the terminal for other things dash p to tell it that we need it we want it to run a specific port 
Docker runs on the port 3306. So it's, it will listen on port 3306 and wherever traffic comes from there is directed, they will send that to another port called 3306. And then we need to, um, for, we need to tell it what network we're using. So dash dash network, we'll tell it that the network we created earlier, um, which was social network. We wanted to use that one. And then dash V for the volume that we created. And the one we used earlier was social volume. That's what we created earlier. And then we're going to tell it where exactly we wanted to store um, this information. So we will use we will use within a container. There'll be a part called var, and then it, it, within var there'll be, there'll be a part called lib, and within lib um, we will we'll have it stored in my SQL. And then we will need um, to we we need to we need it to. Um, Essentially, when you're creating an application, I'll just give you a bit of information here. Um, so when you create a new application and you're going to be storing databases in there, Docker requires some fundamental things that you need to establish first. So um, the first thing you need is you need to have a password. Without that, um, without that, um, MySQL wouldn't allow you to actually create your database. Um, so we, that's what we're going to do here. We're going to, one of our environment variables is going to be a root password and then another environment variable is going to be the database name um so we'll go back into it and i'll show you so um here we are let me just move this up a little bit okay now it's fine where it is um so yeah so capital bear in mind within our um inlet we we spoke about this so we first had these uh, some of these environment variables we're not going to use them here however these will be quite important later on when we run um, our docker application okay so um yeah so we use my sql we want to do in capitals my sql dash root dash password and just for the uh, purpose of this video, we're going to use the passwords. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, yeah. And then we're going to set another uh, environment variable for my SQL. My SQL underscore um, database. And that will equal to, and we're going to call it social DB. And then, um, we're going to call the name of this container mysql and then finally this is quite important um the image that we're going to be using is going to be mysql so um, we're going to call the version 5.7 and what would that what that will do is it will pull that from because we don't have having set up a um, mysql image locally within my within the machine here um so what it was it will pull that up from docker hub um, and then Docker Hub will use the one centrally created and use that for us, which is what we want. So if we do MySQL um, colon 5.7, and that's all ready to go. So if we were to just make sure there's no mistakes, if we were to press enter, it will begin to build, um, pull that image and throw everything that we need. I'll let that run on there just so that you can see what's, exactly, what's happening exactly. that's all run up let's have a look and see if it's there so we can tell here let's go on our sql container there um the name of it my sql it's telling me it that whatever information whatever the request is coming from this um ip address which is from the from the internet from the world wide net send that straight to 3306 so once we built our application um right so once we successfully build our application, we will send a bunch of traffic through it. So whenever someone goes into the application and types in, I don't know, um, my favorite book is da 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 da, da it will then send that information to 3306, where it will save that in the database. And the purpose of this is so that we can then have a separate page where we can display that information to them. If you think about the way social media works, so Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whenever you post or write something, whatever you make an account, 
if you remember the process where you ask email, password, your age, all these things, and you select and input this information, that will send that will be a request that will be sent um, sometime in a, in a dictionary, for example. You know, send that, that to a database and that, that they will hold that information. Um, just bear that in mind also, and it's important we have that here. So we'll go ahead and have a look at this again. So that's all created. Hi guys, um, so um, where we left off, essentially, um, I paused the video just so I can run through a few things. The first thing is that our VEM, you need, you need to make sure you've um, initiated or activated your environment variable. And also um, in part three, I do admit I made a small error within the requirement of TXT. So um, I actually inputted it in the wrong the wrong um, information about the SQL Alchemy, the ones that you need to download, and then also about the SQL Alchemy. So these are the correct versions now. If you if you make these um, changes within your um, requirement of CXC, obviously you've got your um, virtual environment activated. So then you can run um, pip3 install dash r requirement, and that will install everything that you need into it. Um, of course, so we've shown how we, we we run the application for the mysql if you don't remember i will just put up the um i will just put up the the command we used again on here which was this and i explained step by step that the first one social network for the network that we're using to sp for, so that the application can speak to the social media um the social media database that we are creating as well as the volume and then where it should be saved the path that we're going to be using you need to set these environment variables in your terminal um, as well as the database name um, the name of our container and then our um, the, the image that we're using for SQL once we've obviously run that you can do docker ps and you can see here that the container is working and then to connect to your container in order that you can run your create.py and it will automatically create the database um, for you, you need to firstly um, run. Um, so, where it's important is where you, you have to remember the environment variables that we set. These are an environment variable required for you to connect your front end of your application to the back end of your application. So, the first one you want to do is export it. So, export. Uh, we can do it, we can hard code these commands within our. Um, our init file however that's bad practice it's not very safe to do so so the first thing we want to do is export it and then copy that paste that in here and then you want to say equals and this is, this is really important that you don't make any errors when you're typing this so you do my sql plus pi my sql right and then colon forward two forward slashes and then you write root colon then the password that you chose initially we chose one two three four at and then do your local host which is one two seven point zero point zero point one and then colon three three zero six forward slash social and then the name of the database social which we chose was social db and then once you've um once you've done that you can you can uh, press enter and it will create that um it will create that um, environment it will set that environment um, that environment variable in place the second environment variable that we also need to create also is the um the secret key um that one's a little bit more easier um so you want to do one can export and then the secret key you can copy and paste it and the secret key can be anything you like so i, I guess you can just keyboard bash and then once you've done that press enter i've already done it myself for both exports and then once you've done that you then you once you set both and the connection has been created successfully you can do python 3 and then create dot py create dot py will then create the um it will, it will then look into your create py folder and it'll say okay cool in the db in the application or db which is where we import in our init file we can see db equals sql alchemy app once it, it, it feeds up into the into that function app is that one here it will then go and speak to um, our, our one of our models table route stable so you run that application 
and what it will do is it will go ahead and it will create um, a little database for you. Um, to make sure that your database is actually running and has been created, remember we had two classes, right? We had two tables that we were making, our books and then our movies. So you want to ensure that these have been successfully created. What you do is you do Docker PS. That's our container. That's where our database is being held. So you can do Docker exec dash it. Copy that container name. Um, copy that container ID, and then do bash. And then within once it changes from whatever your name was originally to this, you know you're in that container. And then you can do MySQL dash p dash p for password. And you initiate it. It will ask you for the password. It will display as you type it in. Bear that in mind. So you will. The password is one two for for my application. It was, it was one two three four. Obviously, by the time it's grown up, I would have changed everything. Um, and then you can then see some of the SQL commands. Um, I guess this will be a small SQL tutorial. Also, some of the um, let me just um, switch the screen. Uh, when it comes to SQL, you wanna um, it has its own kind of I guess syntax that you can use. We'll we'll dive in in later videos. We'll talk. We'll use. We'll create another application. We'll use Postgres. Um, Postgres, when it comes to industry, Postgres is kind of like the preferred um, database to use. Um, there's different databases like Aurora, um, Maria, um, MariaDB. There's quite a number of there's a number a, a, there's a few number that you use depending on what application you're building and whether you're going to rely on kind of relational databases. For relational databases, so you can use SQL or you can use Postgres. We're using SQL here. But bear in mind, we will touch on Postgres in later times. The reason I mentioned Postgres is because the syntax is slightly differentiates a little bit when you're moving from Postgres to SQL. So we're going to just look at um, some of the, the syntax that we, 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 we have for SQL. Bear in mind, um, in my other videos, I've done a, a small tutorial on some of the syntax for SQL. So the first thing you want to do um, is just say show databases. Databases and you have to always end it with a call, um with with that sig signal. I need to actually find out what that actually means. Um, so you type that in. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I knew where it was. So that one is a semicolon. So you, uh, with with the syntax for SQL, you need to end everything with a semicolon. Um, so there, when you once you click enter, you could know there's a few databases already in there. You've got information schema, MySQL, performance schema, social, DB, which is the one we created, and SYS for sys. Um, for this purpose, we're not going to waste too much time. Uh, we're going to use so, type in so, use social DB because that's the database that we first made. Remember when we first made it when we were creating our use um, our database as well as when we were creating um yeah, when we were creating our networks and things like that we use as the database and we also use it within our exports. So if you use that, it will, it will, if you read that paper, it says reading table information for completion of data of table and column names. You can't turn on this feature to get a quicker setup with, you can turn on this feature to get a quicker setup, um, start up with dash A. Um, database has been changed. So once you see the database has been changed, you know it has to be connected to that database. And then you want to do show um, tables. And you sh we should see movies and books. There we go. So we know we've, cr we've created it. Right now it's empty. So if we did this um, select, for example, star from books, there shouldn't be anything in there because we haven't um, added any tables. However, we can verify that it's created all these different columns for us by doing describe. Um, so if we did describe table um, books, and then we can compare against it. So here we are. So here, here are the fields that we need. Book ID book name, author name, genre, and short content. And we can, we can see that it successfully created those. And we can also verify the same for movies. When it comes to um, to the syntax of MySQL, it's not exactly um, uppercase sensitive, so bear that in mind. Um, I'm actually, I'll, 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 I will do a disclaimer. Um, I am not exactly, I'm 100% sure whether it's syntax um, sensitive. It's just because in my, in the scope that I've used it, I've never really had it bother me when it came to syntax. So it could 
creep up some syntax errors be careful um but for the context of, of, of this um for the context of this project that we're doing we wouldn't have to face any syntax errors or anything of that nature so as we can see here we can also verify that a host all the stuff that we need especially which is why i knew i really needed you to see this the book id which is where the relationships is important and we can we can then verify where we will use uh sql has this thing called joins it will allow you to do select uh a particular information from da -da -da -da, from in our, in our experience from books and from movies where da -da -da -da. so we will we'll, we'll touch on that later but we're going to end part four here um in part five we're going to go ahead and we're going to look at placing um databases um in information into each tables um just so we can get around an idea of how to read those syntaxes get familiar with those syntaxes and afterwards um uh, probably part five we'll talk about um creating the forms um i guess creating a form and also creating um the web page and making sure we can display information but yes yeah, it's, uh, it's looking not too bad um yeah we'll leave it here for now yeah so we'll leave it here for now. I hope you learned a lot from here. And I'll see you.